writing an icon with elementary schools. All right, welcome to 7B. This is for the older ones. And we're going to do a whole bunch of painting today. So we're going to need brown, the dark brown, a little tiny, tiny bit of light flesh, and a little tiny bit of blue. Perhaps distribute the brown, and then just everyone can dip their brush in once to those other two colors. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a lot of very important things to do in this session. We're going to be focusing on Jesus's eyes. And we're also going to put in those eyebrows and the hairs on the top of his head and a few other things. But we need to make his face relatable. So maybe let's start off by doing the eyebrows. The eyebrows, well, they're pretty simple. Almost everyone has them, and it would look funny if Jesus didn't either. I think everyone has eyebrows, except for those people who don't know how to use their barbecues. All right, so painting the eyebrow is pretty straightforward. It's thicker towards the center of the face and gets thinner as it reaches the outside edge of the face. And, well, that carved in area is there to guide you. You can just fill them in. It should take you all of, hmm, I don't know, maybe 20 seconds to do so. Maybe I shouldn't wait this whole time. Teachers, you can pause this video at every instruction and that way it gives everyone 20 or 30 seconds to do their job. But I talked through this time. Let's next go to the eyes themselves. We're going to do the lower edge of the upper eyelid. So everyone has eyelids. When you blink, when you sleep, your eyelids are closed. And the bottom edge of your eyelids has the eyelashes. Now, we're not going to paint in all the eyelashes. That would be a little bit too much for an icon. What we're going to do is we're just going to make a thin, dark line along the bottom of the eyelid. So I've put a yellow line on it so that you can tell which is the part I'm talking about. You don't want to put a dark line on any of the other spots, only the one that's on the upper eyelid on the bottom edge. Okay, pause if you need to, and if not, we're ready to go with the next part, and that is to do the iris. Now, if you look at a normal eye, it's kind of got three areas. There's the white of the eye, which is kind of white. There's the colored area of the eye, which is called the iris, and there's the center of the eye, which is the pupil. That's where the light gets to go through. Well, the iris is going to be our same brown that we've been using all along. And we're also going to fill in the pupil as well. And then afterwards, we're going to put a darker color on top of that. So for now, fill in both of the circles on the inside of the eye, much like in this picture. Again, that shouldn't have taken you too long. If you needed to pause, good. But I think we're ready for the next step. So your teachers are probably thinking, I don't have any darker color than this dark brown. How do I make the center of the eye even darker? Well, this is the first time we're going to be mixing paints. I want you to take just a tiny bit of blue. Maybe dip your brush in it once. And then I want you to put that paint on some paper. Yes, you might have to get some paper to do this. Put it on some paper, and then dip your brush once into your brown paint, and then mix the two together. So it's about one part blue and one part dark brown. Mix them together, and you'll notice that they turn into a kind of a dark gray color. But when the paint dries, it'll look darker. If you look closely on the picture right here, you'll notice that the pupils are darker. So we didn't use black. What we did is we mixed blue and brown. Why do we do that? 
Well, every color in an icon means something. And normally black is the opposite of white. And if white is the presence and the light of God, black would be the absence of God. So a lot of iconographers don't use the color black in their icons, unless they're painting the devil or hell or something that is supposed to represent not having God there. So the pupils of your eyes are just that little dot in the center of the iris. Use the blue and brown and just color them in. They should be relatively round and right where the etching, the carving, tells you to put them. Fantastic. I don't think that should take very long, so I'm just going to continue. The next part we're going to do is, how about let's do the two hairs on the top of Jesus's forehead. You remember that these two hairs mean that he is both God and man, completely God and completely man at the same time. And he still is now. Even though Jesus resurrected, he didn't stop being human. He is still a human like us, but he is with the Father. So let's do those two hairs. It should take you two strokes of your brush, so it shouldn't take you very long. And then I need you to rinse out your brush. Take it to that water, swish it around, use a little bit of paper towel, wipe it so that it comes relatively clean because we're gonna switch from dark colors to using a tiny bit, but an important little bit of light color. We're gonna put in the corners of the eye. Now, when we do this, you have to think really less is more. We just want to put a little bit on each side of the eye. We don't want white all the way around, because then it will look like Jesus has got his eyes in the headlights. He'll be, he'll be surprised. No, we want nice, calm eyes where Jesus is looking at us. So hopefully the same amount on both sides, but very little. You don't need big whites of the eyes to be able to have Christ looking at you. All right, it's gonna take you a minute to wash your brushes and get that done. So pause the movie here, movie, pause this film here, and let's do it. And now for the rest of this lesson, you can put your paintbrush down and just listen and watch for a little bit. Because I want to tell you about how icons are actually focused on us, on you and me, and everyone who looks at an icon. This is going to seem a little bit weird, because most things that we look at don't do this. You know what? When I grew up, there was a show called Sesame Street, and it taught me a lot about something called perspective. There was Grover, and Grover did a skit about near and far. Sometimes he came right up to the screen, and he was near. And other times, he was very far. And when he was near, look at the size of my nose. And when I'm far, look at the size of my nose now. Well, I know this is going to go over some of your heads, but icons aren't painted in normal perspective like Grover showed. They're painted in inverse perspective. In normal perspective, everything vanishes to some point in the background. But in inverse perspective, everything comes forward to you. And that's because you are the reason for the icon. You are part of the whole picture. You're the center part. Learning about perspectives is a little bit tough. It takes a lot of thinking. But when you see an icon with its strange looking buildings, or those eyes that are looking straight at you, you have to remember that it's designed to let you know that God is already paying attention to you. It's an invitation 
into a relationship. If you look at a picture of God and God's not looking at you, you can't have a relationship. But if you look at a picture of God and everything that he has is focused on you, it really helps you to come closer to him. Anyway, I hope this was a good session for you. Um, I look forward to number eight.